you for joining me today. Hello. Got a lot of people on. Hello, hi. Welcome, welcome. Hi. It is a lovely day, isn't it? It's just so gorgeous outside. Hello, hi. Thank you for joining me, hello. Do you guys smell that? Oh, I smell it. I cooked myself a biscuit. Have any of you guys been doing any cooking lately? If you have, let me know. Let me know what you've cooked or even if you just enjoyed eating something, let me know what you enjoyed. I'm gonna enjoy this biscuit later. <laughs> Hello, my friends. Hi. Welcome. Hello. Make yourself nice and cozy because I have a great surprise for all of you. Hello. Hi. Well, hello. Got more people. Welcome. I don't know about you, but... A little story sounds nice about now, doesn't it? You guys want to hear a beautiful story about me and my friends? I know I do. Well, today we'll be reading from our lovely princess book. Hello, welcome. Hopefully everyone is doing okay today. Hello. All right, shall we get started on our story? I think so. All right. Got some nice jazz music playing. can all celebrate together. Perfect, hello, hi, welcome. If you're just now joining us, take a seat because we're about to read a fabulous story. I'm excited. Hopefully you all are too. All right, what do you say we get into it, yeah? All right. Everyone settle down, and I'll read a story. Perfect, perfect. Welcome, if you're just now joining. Hello. Hi, welcome. Yes. Oh, I love having my friends here. How many of you love just celebrating with your friends? Hello, hi. Oh, thank you. Yes. Hello. Hi, everybody. All right. I think it's time for a story. Don't you all? I think so. All right. Our first story is about me. <laughs> all right. It is called A Surprise Guest. It was a balmy afternoon in New Orleans, perfect for a night with friends. Charlotte, honey, Big Daddy LaBeouf called to his daughter. How about going to Tiana's place for supper tonight? You always know that's a good idea. <laughs> oh, Daddy, that would be wonderful. Just give me a minute to change. Lottie said. Ooh, I love celebrating and having supper with my friends. A little later, Big Daddy and Charlotte drove off. They didn't realize their dog Stella was asleep in the back of the car. When the LaBeoufs arrived at the restaurant, a jazz band was on stage. Louis the alligator was playing his trumpet. Also, 
quick side note, if any of you play any instruments, please tell me. I adore music. Charlotte, how are you? Princess Tiana exclaimed. She was happy to see her best friend. Big Daddy, would you like to sit with my mama and Naveen's parents? Why, I can't think of anyone better to share my supper with. He replied. Soon, Tiana's family and friends were settled at a big table. The princess walked around the dining room to make sure her other guests were happy, too. Always have to make sure your guests are happy. Meanwhile, Stella had woken up. Uh-oh. The dog climbed out of the buff's car and looked around. Immediately, she caught the mouth-watering scent of Tiana's baguette. Stella followed her nose right into the restaurant. Looky here, shouted one of the cooks. We have a visitor. Here you go, puppy. Have some of this gumbo. It's a new recipe. Stella eagerly tasted the dish. Mmm, it was delicious. A moment later, a waiter threw her a large bone. The dog couldn't believe her luck. Stella spent the whole evening in the kitchen, while Charlotte and Big Daddy dined at Lewis's jazz music and talked with their friends. Stella was getting all kinds of treats. What a lucky dog. Oh, I see someone said they play clarinet and used to be in a jazz band. Well, that sounds like my cup of tea. <laughs> Late that night, after the last jazz number had been played, all of the guests went home. Charlotte and Big Daddy never realized that Stella was also at the restaurant. Ta-ta, Charlotte called as they left. Eudora left with Naveen's parents. Turning to her daughter, she said, I have never heard the band play quite that well. And that new gumbo? Mmm, delicious. I'll see you tomorrow, sweetheart. After Princess Tiana walked her family to the door, she went back to the dining room to finish cleaning up. Not only is it important to make a yummy meal, but it's also important to clean up after yourself, too. A few minutes later, Louise and the band went to the kitchen for their evening meal. As they walked in, Stella began to bark. Grr, woof, woof. She was terrified of the giant alligator. He is pretty big, isn't he? <laughs> oh, now hold on, little dog. Louis spoke to Stella. I'm not here to eat you. I just wanted a taste of the chef's new gumbo. But Stella was frightened. She kept barking. The kitchen staff and the band members looked at each other. They weren't sure what to do. Uh-oh. In the dining room, Tiana and Naveen heard the barking. They rushed to see what was causing the commotion. Tiana recognized the LaBeouf's pet at once. Stella, what are you doing in here? She asked. Don't worry, Louis is our friend. He wouldn't hurt anybody. That's true, Naveen cried, putting his arm around Louis. He is nothing but a big guy with an even bigger heart. The alligator peeked out from behind his tail. He didn't understand why the dog was so upset. Stella looked at him suspiciously. Go ahead, encouraged Princess Tiana. Just go over and make friends. It's so nice to make friends. Cautiously, Stella walked toward Louis. The alligator stayed very still. He didn't want to frighten the dog all over again. See, nothing to be scared about, Naveen said. 
Soon, Stella realized Louis was harmless. The dog wagged her tail. Then she smelled some delicious chicken. Tiana smiled. <laughs> Let's get dinner for you all. The princess and the kitchen staff quickly put together a supper out of the evening's leftovers. Now that is what I'm talking about. I'm just getting hungry just reading this story. I might do some cooking after this. You guys think I should bake up something? I love baking. Let's see what happens next. Everyone went into the dining room. The staff ate while Prince Naveen played the ukulele. Louis picked up his trumpet and joined in the song. Some of the waiters and waitresses even began to dance. Stella didn't pay much attention, though. She was eating some of Tiana's baguettes. A while later, the staff headed home. Tomorrow would be another busy day at Tiana's place. Come along, Stella, Tiana told the dog. Time for you to go, too. It looks like they're having so much fun. The prince and princess brought Stella to Charlotte's house. No one had noticed she was missing yet. Oh, good night, Stella, Princess Tiana said, giving the dog a big hug. Now that you know how much fun we have at the restaurant, you should come by more often. Woof, woof. In dog language, I believe that means yes. <laughs> Stella barked. She hadn't expected to have such an adventure that night. She knew she'd return to Tiana's palace the next chance she got. The end. Perfect. Wow. Well, I can say I love celebrating. And I love just having fun and listening to music. Any of you guys love music? I'm pretty sure you do. You know, in times like this, it's good to put on some music, just let loose, and just dance. Have fun. Have a ball. Well, hello there. Hi, I'm seeing we're having more people. Hello. Thank you, Peaches. That is so sweet. Thank you. Hello, Gigi. And I see you too, Rose. Hello. Hi. Welcome. I don't know about you guys, but I'm having a blast. And I would love to read another story. So, this one. Oh, hello. We have more highs. I see everybody, and I'm going to say hi to everybody. Hello. Hi. Hello, Kendall and Taylor. Hello. Perfect. All right. Well. I think I'm going to start our next story. This story is about a good friend. I don't know if you've heard of her, but her name is Princess Jasmine. Yes, great friend of mine. And this one is called The Desert Race. Right. Jasmine and Aladdin were strolling across the palace grounds one evening when the sultan ran out onto the balcony. Drat, the sultan cried. Oh, drat, drat, drat. Jasmine was surprised. Usually her father loved the desert race. Every year, the best riders from Agrabah competed against those of the neighboring kingdom of Zagreba. The fastest horse and rider were awarded the prize golden palm trophy. What's the matter, father? Jasmine asked. The sultan shook his head sadly. I just heard that Prince Fias will be riding for Zagreba again. His horse is so fast, he's won the race the last three times in a row. I have an idea, father, Jasmine said eagerly. I could ride midnight in the desert race this year. He's the fastest horse in Agraba. Sounds like a good idea. Oh, dear me, no. The Sultan looked shocked at the very suggestion. The desert race can be dangerous. I won't have my daughter risking her neck like that. 
How about if I ride midnight in the race? Aladdin spoke up. The Sultan's face brightened immediately. What a splendid idea, he cried. You'll have such a good time, my boy. Let's see. The next day, Aladdin and Jasmine went to the stables. As soon as Aladdin was on midnight, the horse threw him off. Yikes, that looks like that hurt. Let me help, said the princess. Midnight gave her no trouble, as usual. The horse was ready to go. Aladdin swung onto Midnight's back, but the horse still didn't want to cooperate. He kicked up his heels and sent Aladdin flying. Aladdin brushed himself off. Here, let me try, Jasmine said. She easily climbed onto the saddle. Midnight happily carried her around the stable yard, doing everything she asked. Sorry, Jasmine told Aladdin. I guess Midnight is a one-person horse. Now, how are we supposed to win that trophy back? The Sultan asked. Let me ride in the race, Father, Jasmine urged. The Sultan didn't seem to hear her. Perhaps we can find Aladdin another fast horse. He didn't look hopeful, though. Don't worry, Aladdin said. I'll think of something. What will Aladdin think of? Hmm. Interesting. The day of the race arrived. Ooh. Riders from Zagreba paraded into Agraba. Fias rode in on one of his impressive white stallions, Desert Warrior. I don't know why we bothered to bring the Golden Palm Trophy, Fias announced haughtily. We'll only have to carry it back to Zagreba later. Fans from both kingdoms gathered to watch the race. Soon, the riders took their places at the starting line. Ooh, the Sultan looked at Aladdin. Hmm. What an odd-looking horse that boy is riding. I wonder why I've never seen it before. But he didn't have time to worry about that. Now, where's Jasmine? He wondered. It's time to start the race. But the princess was nowhere to be found. Hmm. Where is she? Wonder where Jasmine is. Mm, we can't wait any longer, I suppose, the Sultan said. He raised a flag to signal the start of the race. One, two, three, and they're off. The riders galloped into the desert. A black horse with a mysterious veiled rider took the lead right away. As soon as they were out of the view of the palace, the rider threw off the veil. <gasps> it was Jasmine. I do hate going against father's wishes, she whispered to Midnight. But I just had to prove that you were the fastest. Aladdin was curious about the rider on the black horse. <gasps> Jasmine, he gasped when he saw her. So it was Jasmine the whole time. Pretty clever idea. Very interesting. Let's see what happens next. Just then, the horse spotted his his horse spotted the cool, inviting water in an oasis. Now that's more like it, exclaimed the horse. Except the horse was actually the genie. Genie, <laughs> he looked just like a horse to me. Wow. Anyway, he jumped into the water and took the shape of a seahorse. Hey, this isn't part of the plan, Aladdin cried. Don't worry, Al, the genie said. We'll catch up. Gotta stay hydrated, you know? On land, Jasmine and Midnight galloped off without a backward glance. Very 
very interesting. Feyaz and Desert Warrior were starting to catch up. They were shocked when they saw the princess. Feyaz didn't want to lose her. Jasmine urged Midnight on, but the other horse was very fast. Finally, Desert Warrior pulled ahead. Give up now, Feyaz shouted. That trophy will always belong to Zagreba. But Midnight wasn't finished yet. He surged forward again and passed Desert Warrior. Wow. Not so fast, Jasmine called to Fiaz with a laugh. That trophy is in Agrabah, and that's where it's going to stay. Pretty impressive if you ask me. Feyaz and Warrior stayed on Midnight's heels until the horses had to jump on a ditch that crossed the path. Midnight sailed over easily, but Warrior skidded to a stop. <gasps> wow. With the other team out of the running, it seemed there was nothing to keep Jasmine and Midnight from winning. But then the princess heard the sound of hoofbeats close behind her. Uh-oh. What? She cried, looking back. It was Aladdin! <gasps> wow. Jasmine hadn't even known he was still in the race. That's sneaky, Aladdin. Soon, Aladdin and his mystery horse caught up, and he and Jasmine were fighting for the lead. Oof. Jasmine was glad that the trophy would stay in Agrabah no matter which one of them won. But she really wanted to prove that Midnight was the fastest horse in the two kingdoms. She urged him on. The two horses were neck and neck, and they neared the finish line. First, Midnight pulled ahead a tiny bit. Then, Aladdin's horse did. But neither could keep the lead. And so, the two horses crossed the finish line at the exact same time. At the same time, pretty impressive. Pretty, pretty impressive. As soon as Midnight slowed to a stop, Jasmine jumped off, gave her tired horse a hug, and led him to the water trough. Then she walked over to Aladdin. Congratulations, he said. Same to you, Jasmine replied. But where in the world did you find such a fast horse? Er, Aladdin looked at his horse. Then he looked at his feet. Um, that is, he didn't seem to know what to say. Surprise! The genie cried, transforming back into his usual self. Jasmine gasped. Genie, that was you? <sighs> Sorry, princess. The genie said, winking. We were just horsing around. Aladdin grinned sheepishly. It was my idea. I couldn't bear the thought of Zagreba winning again this year. Oh, genie. <laughs> this is so interesting. Oh, dear, the sultan said. The rules state that it must be a horse and rider team, not a genie and rider team. I'm afraid this, this disqualifies you two from the race. Then he smiled. And that means Jasmine and Midnight are the winners. Jasmine changed into a new outfit. At the awards ceremony, she patted Midnight. Jasmine had always known her horse was fast, but she never imagined he could beat a genie. And the and wow, that is a great story of my close friend Jasmine just winning alongside with Aladdin, my other close friend as well. Well, that was very, very fun. Are there any times that any of you just felt like you wanted to just be with your friends and have a nice, fun game you wanted to play? I know there are times that I feel that way. 
but this was absolutely fun. And I cannot wait to just enjoy just being home and being in the company of people I love. And I want everyone that is watching to remember that these times, you can get through them by listening to your parents, but also keeping that magic alive. Oh, you are very welcome. I love reading the stories for you all. It was so nice to see you. And like I said in the beginning, I think I might have to cook some more biscuits because I might eat this one and another one and another one. So enjoy yourselves and, and, and try cooking too. Cooking is always such a great activity. As you know, I love to do that as well. Well, thank you. Thank you, Devilry and Kaylin. Thank you so much. Everyone, keep that light alive. And if you want to visit me or my friends or see more, you can check us out at the Princess Party Company. You can check our Instagram out as well as our website and Facebook. Thank you so much. And everyone, have a beautiful rest of the day. Thank you. Oops. <laughs>